so the next section is where things get cool, but also maybe ever so slightly complicated. So I'm going to lay down a node again. Let's just pause the graph. I'm going to start typing separate particle sources. Okay, again, this is a node that you won't have, um, but we're going to dive down inside it and take a look at it, see how you can make it. I believe that this will become part of NPM soon in one form or another. But at first, I just want to show you how I made this. I had a lot of help making this um, by one of the Bifrost developers, Phil Mayer. So thanks for that, Phil. But if I uh, dive down inside this, we can take a look at how it is made. First of all, the most important thing is that we, in our NPM solver settings, that we do have label sources ticked on, which means the, the solver is going to label each one of our gel sources. So we've got one, two, and three. And it does actually look at the geometry that's connected to it as well, which is why we merged our geometry with the two side emitters from our main emitter. So let's just sort of jump into the separate particle sources and see how it's made. Um, and I'm just going to open up the Bifrost graph so we can have a look a bit better. So basically, with bringing in the granular particles, which would plug into here. Let's have a look at the first one. We're basically getting the first in the array. We're getting a property, which is point source ID, which is being written by the solver by ticking on that attribute that I said in the NPM solvers, which was label sources, okay? And basically, all we're doing here is we're, we're getting one source and we're deleting the others, okay? So we've got first in array goes into, we're going to get a point, the, the point source ID, yeah? We're going to get the array indices, and then we're going to get a find all in array. Um, and we're going to remove that from the array. This, um, we'll leave this uninverted. And so we're going to re remove from array the any indice that is not the first source ID, yeah? And then we that goes into a delete points. So basically, we're just getting, as I said before, we're getting the first source ID from the first source and deleting all of the others. Now, when we then duplicate that and create another one and another one and another one, we then output all of these and we end up with a set of sources with each one deleting the others, which gives us a separate source. So that is kind of nifty, and that allows us to then go and cash out our points, bring them back in, mesh them, and it will allow us to put on different shaders. So I'm just going to drop this in now. I'm just going to hold down the Alt key, let go, and click granular particles. Actually, no, we're going to do it by hand. I'm going to put this in. So let's put in our first source straight into the particle property reference. Let's undo that and plug that into a new output. And I'm just going to unpause the graph. And I'm just going to plug that in here. And we're going to have a little look when we rewind to see what we've got showing up. So you can see now that the first source we've got is actually this main emitter here. I'll start playing that. That is going to be the only source that comes out of that. Now to get the other sources to work, we need to duplicate this, this particle property reference node that we created earlier. Control C, Control V, and we want to put in the second source into there, into a new output. And now you can see that these guys have turned up. Okay. Um, if we unplug that one, we can see that only these guys are here. So this is really handy. And we'll just do this again for the third source, which is going to be our chocolate at the very end of the simulation. We can't see that at the moment because it's set to start at the end of the simulation, but if I take it from 215 to one and just come up here, we can see that indeed it does show up. So I'll just put that back to 215 again. So this is great because this means we can separate out all of our NPM particles. So the next step is to cut off all of those and we're going to get into caching out our NPM particles and we're going to cache them as Bifrost files. 
So I'll start typing in cash, and we want to put down, actually let's put down a right Bifrost object. Okay. And so with the right Bifrost object there, I'm just going to go into my cache folder. Let's just set the project again. Cache, and I'm just going to start typing in here something like new underscore main underscore emission dot one two three four hashes and I'm going to click save now we need time added to this frame section so I'm just going to type time and then I'm going to type too long because we need a too long node from time so we're going to put in the frame and then too long into the frame here and that means that we're going to write a sequence of Bob files rather than one large Bob file that gets overwritten all the time. So another thing we want to do is because there's a lot of attributes coming through here, but basically what we've got in here is all of these attributes, viscosity, yield, stress, vibration, speed, they are all actually written into the file as we come across. And we want to get, we don't want all of that information. There are only certain things that we do want from that information, like velocity, point size, and things like that. We don't need yield stress and all of that kind of thing. And it really, what that's going to do is just make our file, file size higher. So a quick way to do that is to just rip an arrays property node out of another scene. So if we go to Windows, go to the Bifrost browser, and we open up, let's go to gel and open up one of the ice cream gel examples in there. And if we just close this and we just have a look around inside here, we can see that before file cache, there's an arrays component properties node. And all the properties to arrays, because this is an NPM sim and a gel, NPM gel sim, have already been written out by one of the Bifrost developers. So that's cool. So all we have to do is just control C and rip it. We'll get rid of that ice cream now. And I'm just gonna hit control V. And so we'll just drop this down here. And that means we're erasing all the components that we don't need, which are in here. As you can see, like point volume preservation and all of, all of these things that just add up to creating our uh, bigger file size. So now we're a little bit more ready to start cashing out. We could probably cash out all three at the same time by creating multiple versions of this and cash out all three at the same time. But I'm gonna go through and just cash out one at a time just because I find it a little bit safer. If I see something going on, I can just quickly stop it. But I'm gonna cash out one at a time and we'll come back. But just before I cache, something really important is on your timeline, make sure that you, it is set to play once. You don't want a continuous loop because when you're uh, caching, you'll get to the frame 400 and it will start again at zero. So just make sure you've got this set to one. It's just a fail safe, okay? And we can just rewind the simulation, plug this in here. Let's just come down here and we'll press play. So if I just go into that cache folder, we can see that everything is caching and the file sizes aren't huge at the moment, but they will get bigger as we go. So that's been cached out. We'll just undo this one now. And then I'm gonna plug in the next one. We'll give it a new name and I'll start caching that. So we'll just call this, uh, New sides. Rewind. Plug that in. The sides should show up. There we go. I just hit play and that will start caching. Cool, so this one is done also. I'm just gonna break that. Break this, plug in the final one, which is gonna be our chocolate sauce. I'll just change the name here, call it new. Chalk the source underscore. It's going to rewind. 
let that play all the way through to frame 400 like the others so that's the final cache finished so we just undo this one as well and now we can move on to meshing these move on to some sort of material look dev <laughs> 